Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Jones. Thank you for coming onto my podcast. Today, I will be answering your questions about the coronavirus and ways you can be safe. So Dr. Andrew Jones is a board certified physician currently working at Cedars Sinai Hospital, which is one of the top hospitals in the country, as well as Beverly Hills Concierge Doctors, the Masters in Molecular Microbiology and Immunology, a bachelor's with double major in microbiology and cell science and chemistry. He worked as a research scientist at the City of Hope for Biomedicine and Genetics and a research associate at Norris Cancer Center, which is part of the USC Keck School of Medicine and has taught microbiology. Hi there, I'm Cassie Lewis and thank you so much for joining us for this discussion. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Jones, who graciously agreed to uh, discuss the coronavirus with us today. So it's in a very important discussion right now. Everybody is talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's on the news. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of fear happening right now. It definitely is. Um, so it's really important that we have uh, transparency and mm -hmm. honesty. Um, so we have a lot of questions uh, from people who are concerned. Of course. And today we're just going to go through uh, some of them point by point. So I want to ask you a few uh, basic questions to start just to get into this. So what is the coronavirus? Coronavirus is an RNA virus that's been around for centuries, hundreds and hundreds of years. Causes the everyday common cold year after year when you get sick two or three times per, per, uh, per year. Basically, 2002 caused SARS, 2012 MERS, which killed 10% uh, of SARS, 2002 and 30 to 4% in 2012. Fast forward to 2019 in Wuhan, China, you have the SARS uh, coronavirus 2, notoriously named the coronavirus disease 2019 transmitted from bats to animals, then to humans. And that's where we are today with the coronavirus. Okay, um, so who is, who is most at risk um, with the coronavirus? The most at risk with the coronavirus are anybody elderly. Uh, other in respiratory infections is the very young, the very old. Fortunately, the coronavirus, this type, this, this one, is sparing kids. So what are some of the symptoms that we're supposed to look out for? So the symptoms vary from like none to minor to severe. So they found in China that the three most common symptoms that have been shown with the coronavirus are high fever, dry cough, mm -hmm. and shortness of breath, warranting you getting further treatment going to the hospital. So very similar to the Very similar, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it's hard to tell really. It's hard to tell, like you can't look at someone's this person, like you don't know unless you're tested. Right, okay. Which makes right. it hard because there's so much panic with people coughing, like, oh my god, you can have, like, you don't know. Yeah, so. there definitely is at the moment, I yeah, think. Yeah, there is, yeah. Um, So someone asked, what is the death rate of, of flu, say, versus coronavirus? The death rate is, for the flu, is like 0.1% of the people who get the flu die. Uh, that's low number because of vaccines. Okay. 2.3% uh, of people who do get the uh, coronavirus, they die, but that number is greatly uh, over exaggerated because you're going based on the people who've been tested. Mm. In this country, they say 2,400 people have been positive with coronavirus. It's a lot more, it's tenfold that. Because you have people with no symptoms walking around, you know, had a coronavirus. So that mm. death rate is a lot lower than that. Right, just because so many people haven't been tested exactly, yet. Exactly, exactly. This is based on the tests only. Right, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Okay, so a lot of people were asking, how do we prevent this? Um, we're seeing so many things get canceled, mm -hmm. we're getting offices, getting closed down, music festivals getting put back. We're seeing um, people wearing masks out in public and mm -hmm. in the airports now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how do we, can you talk about that a little more? Yeah, so the CDC has a good general guide on what we can do to prevent it. You know, wash your hands, cover your mouth when you sneeze, stay home if you're sick, uh, get checked out, avoid uh, large crowds and so forth. Uh, but that's an oversimplification of everything. You can't stop the coronavirus, just like you can't stop the flu or any other respiratory virus. Uh, trying to stop the coronavirus is like trying to stop the wind. It's not gonna happen. That's why every winter you get sick two to three times during the winter time. And everyone all over the world gets a cold. But these are actually ways you can prevent being sick. Mm, okay, mm -hmm. okay, so they are worth doing for the time being? Yes, they're worth doing, but it won't stop. Right. But it will help prevent. So slow it down? Uh, slow it down. For example, when I, when I go and I say you can't stop the coronavirus, for example, they have this technology out where you can measure the droplets that come out of a cough or a sneeze. Mm -hmm. Cough or sneeze is expelled at 100 miles per hour. You have millions of respiratory droplets that are released. And you only need 1,000 virus particles to cause infection. So they actually have this technology where they can measure the, the, the large droplets, they fall to the ground. 
The smaller ones can stay in the air they measure from a few seconds to actually a few weeks. Therefore, you walk into a crowded room or so forth, someone just sneezed in the elevator, someone sneezed coughed here, you walk through an hour later and you breathe in, it goes into your lungs. Oh, wow. So the people who have died from coronavirus, <laughs> what has made, or what, are, or what are the factors that have made them more susceptible um, to this virus? If you look at the, this country, United States, for example, obesity is on the rise, leading to more people with diabetes, mm -hmm. heart attacks, strokes, kidney disease, and so forth. Anything, the pathophysiology of these diseases that are being affecting people and killing them is stems from a weakened immune system. When your body is stressed, your immune system can't do its job. Stress on the body is people who are obesity is on the rise in this country, which is attributing, contributing to the lower immune system. Heart attacks, strokes, diabetes is weakening our immune systems. So it makes sense why the people who are being affected by the coronavirus and dying are the ones who uh, have these comorbidities, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's just going to get worse with time as the number of people with cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and kidney disease goes up, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. So talking about the people who are in the moderate to mild kind of category, mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what are their immune systems doing that maybe can compare to someone in the critical? Okay. So your immune system is not just inside your body, it's everywhere. You have enzymes in your eyes and your tears that mm -hmm. block infections in your nose that trap mucus and hair cells that block everything. Your mouth, your, your lungs, your skin has oils that carry a peptides that block and kill bacteria and viruses, uh, along with the cough reflex and so forth. Um, you have like macrophages, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, mast cells, uh, dendritic cells that it work in the, what's called the innate immune system to act and kill things rapidly in the beginning. I see. And then, if you're healthy, that doesn't work. You have a second layer of protection called the adaptive immune system that will knock any virus out. Mm, yeah. Okay, okay. And how does that compare to someone in the critical condition? Their body can't mount a response as efficiently. And then, say you have tested positive for the mm -hmm. coronavirus, what should you do? The quarantine for two weeks, if you have mild symptoms, is to protect other people, the people who don't have a strong immune system. Right. The people who would be in the hospital, critical, and end up dying. Mm. That's why you self-quarantine to the lessen exposure to them. Got it. With that said, every time you have a cold, cough, sneeze, and so forth, you put people around you at risk. Mm. Year after year after year. So it's a catch-22. If I don't go see my relative in the nursing home, for example, or my loved one with uh, on chemotherapy, lower immune system, mm. and I test positive for the coronavirus and I wait, but yes, but there's hundreds of other infections they're going to be exposed to over and over year after year. So it's a catch-22. It's like, well, if I didn't do that, if I do this for the coronavirus, then do I do this for the flu? Which yes, you do this for the flu. But then what about the adenovirus, the enterovirus, the respiratory syncytial virus, and so forth and so forth? Hmm. Uh, this where do you draw the line? Because you get sick several times per year. You may right. show symptoms, you may not. So it's kind of common sense. Like if it's, you're feeling under the weather, mm -hmm. don't go and see someone. Yes, and but that's not 100%, but yes, that, that's where we are, common sense. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, so you, we're talking about self-quarantining. Mm -hmm. You do think it's the best thing to do right now or to, to slow things down or? Self-quarantine will, the way infections run through society or uh, a country is it runs through and people get infected. The ones who are healthy, they get over it. The ones who are not, they will die. Mm. The problem with that letting a uh, disease run its course is it goes through so fast. The hospital systems get overloaded. People who need the treatment don't have access because you're limited. So what governments are trying to do is called a delayed effect the self-quarantine, to stay home if you're sick and so forth, to not overload the hospital. Right. They're trying to build up what's called a herd immunity to where if a certain number of people are infected and they become immune, the people who are at risk, they don't get infected and mm. they survive. But you can't allow herd immunity just to go happen fast because you're gonna overload the system. So they're trying to do like what's called a delayed approach. Mm. The UK is trying to do this right now. Right, so, mm. so we probably will adopt that if I haven't already. We'll see, it depends on how the cases look in this country as time goes on. I see, Yeah. but it's really putting those people with compromised. Um... Exactly, and that's why, for example, I get the flu shot every year. It's not to protect, I don't need the flu shot. Mm -hmm. It's to protect my patients who are kids, 
and my elderly patients or patients who are with a weakened immune system. Right, who are so, at risk. Exactly. So. Understandable. Mm -hmm. So talking about more about our immune systems, mm -hmm. um, it seems to be the key to all of this. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to um, boost your immune system? Boosting your immune system is misleading. Genetically, everyone has a genetically predisposed immune system. You cannot boost your immune system, but you can optimize and strengthen it. Don't smoke, exercise, mm -hmm. get a good night's sleep, drink plenty of water, which has been shown to eliminate toxins and pathogens from the body, uh, maintain a healthy weight, uh, and reduce stress. Mm -hmm. Those things will optimize your immune system. Anything deviated outside of that will put stress on your body and make you more susceptible to getting infection, whether it's coronavirus or another virus. Got it, got mm -hmm. it. Um, somebody was asking about zinc. Um, <laughs> oh, how, does, yeah. how does zinc affect viruses? I, I, I get that a lot. Zinc has been around for a while. Zinc has been shown to block the virus from replicating. Mm -hmm. It's been shown to inhibit the virus from binding to the respiratory epithelial cells in, your, in the mucous membranes mm -hmm. and to decrease the duration of symptoms and the duration by one day. Oh, Actually. okay, great. So how can we get hold of that? Like, in what You can buy zinc over the counter in a capsule. That's the best way, like the lozenges. You put it in your mouth and just let it and slowly let it dissolve okay. and it'll do its job. Okay. But great. you have to be careful because too much zinc can cause copper deficiency and oh, other remedies. So, just so in moderation. Every three hours is needed, yes. Got it. When you start to feel sick, you'll be fine. Um, and when do we think this will all go away? Um, is there light at the end of the tunnel here? There, there, there is light. With any infection, it doesn't last forever. Infections, they run their course like the flu. Every, every pandemic in this country has run its, run its course. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how long it's going to last. We're thinking that it's going to, once the flu season is over and the weather warms up, that we're going to have less and less cases because viruses like the cold weather. Because uh -huh. your mucus secretions increase your white blood cell count decreases your, because your body's core temperature drops. That's why you need to bundle up in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get sick mainly during the wintertime. And the summertime, you're outdoors, you're not confined, crowded, so forth, more airflow. Right. And your immune system's stronger. So the weather will be right. a big factor exactly, in exactly. kind of... But we don't know. We'll find out. This is all new information. Right. Yes. So what are the numbers right now in total deaths, um, say in the U.S. right now, from coronavirus? Uh, so far, around 2,400 people have been infected, leading to 50 deaths. Um, but that number is changing, obviously, after the finish of the podcast and so forth. Compared to the flu, mm -hmm. it's 34 million people have been infected and 20,000 people have died, and including 105 kids. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. So it's important to get the flu shot. So as a healthcare provider, are you doing anything different right now um, when you're seeing patients? How are you living day to day? That is a good question, and I get this question a lot, and to be honest, no. I still work out, get a good night's sleep, eat healthy, uh, try to maintain a healthy weight, and wash my hands when I can. I'm not perfect. I'm going to touch my eyes and face here and there inadvertently, touch my cell phone, even though I try to keep it clean. And I'm going to do that, and for, here's a story I'm going to share with you. I was in the subway five years ago in New York, and I was sitting next to a guy who was coughing. I looked at the young man and said, excuse me, you're okay? He said, yeah, I have a cold. I said, okay. He probably had any of the litany of 200 types of viruses causing common cold, including coronavirus. Five years forward, you're in a sub with that same guy, and he says, I tested positive for the coronavirus. There would be mass hysteria on the subway, people running, trying to get away, you know as if he said he had the, the plague or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, the reason for this podcast and so forth and that question is, it puts things in perspective. That people fear the unknown. And when you realize that these viruses are gonna come every year, even the flu changes every year. And I harbor every year, get the flu shot. All you, can, you can't stop these viruses from coming, but you can protect yourself and increase the chances that you will be fine when you are exposed, because you can't stop a respiratory virus. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can help prevent it, mm -hmm. as I've explained, but you can't, you can't stop these viruses. Right, and like you said, it's just keeping a healthy body. Exa exactly, that's, that's all you can do, and that's all I do, so I don't do anything different, mm -hmm. so. Got it. And so in conclusion, if you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. So. Great. You gotta enjoy life, you can't, I mean, there's gonna be another outbreak later on, another outbreak and so forth. Right, you know, so. right. 
Thank you, Cassie Lewis, for coming on the show and bringing these questions from very concerned uh, audience members. Mm, thanks so for having far. me. Um, hopefully, I was able to shed light on a very important topic mm -hmm. um, and reassure some people and steps and things we can and cannot do. And just reassure my audience here who's been watching, thank you, that you just have to live your life. So, there's other podcasts to follow. Take care and have a good one.